and I'm Chris West here with That Sci-Fi Show at Mayhem Spooky Empire's Ultimate Horror Week. And, and finally, after three or four conventions of meeting up with her, I finally <laughs> get Erin Gray on the air with me. Erin, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show. My pleasure. Now, What's obviously, your name again? Chris West. Uh, Chris, okay. <laughs> That's right. Nobody remembers me. I'm just a fat, funny guy that's on the air, so it's fine. No, I, know, I remember nobody... you. I just didn't remember your name. But that's uh, okay. So physically, I'm always, you know, that's part of being a nice big guy is I'm memorable. There you go. So obviously, you've done everything from work with Gil Gerard, Silver Spoon. That's everything in itself right there. <laughs> how was it when we had Gil Gerard on at yeah. Drag Hub, thanks to you? Uh -huh. And I mean, how was it work with him? Because I mean, just doing the interview with him, I could tell the guy is non-stop uh, laughing. Funny, yeah. Yes. Hysterical, and I'm the straight man, um, and we actually work very well together. I mean, it, the only problem was is that he would get me laughing so much that I would say, "Just shut up for five seconds, so I can just get rid of this stitch in the side." You know, just just zip it for a second, just so I can just calm down. But he was obviously great to work with. I need to breathe, please. For please, the love please, of God. just I'm like nonstop laughing. Yeah, that's well, a good cardio workout for you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Uh, you don't have to work out. Just hang out with Gil Gerard. Gil Gerard, right. Th there we go. I've come up with three new exercise theory. Well, exercise and holistic things now that I've started the show. And now with our... Oh, three. who's that? Chris. That must be your mom. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. We got our, our big sponsor, Sound Pillow. And I figured out with, you know, it's got the pillow with Sound. speakers in it. Oh, okay. And you can hook up like an MP3 player to it or an iPhone or iPad, whatever your choice is. Cool. And play through the music while you sleep. So I figured if oh, we this take is perfect for my college, my if daughter's we take in college. audio of Bob Ross, who is the human quaalude, put it, mix it with the sound pillow, you will have people knocked out within seconds. Okay. So now we got that. Now we got the Gil Gerard exercise program. Okay. The high cardio impact, where you just have to sit and watch an hour of Gil Gerard make jokes nonstop. Right. And you can't stop laughing. Right. Well, unless you pee yourself and then go to the and bathroom you, uh, and take oh care of yourself, God. please. Do we have to go down that road? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? In broadcasting, I found it's better to just, just mention it okay. and not have somebody come up to me later and say, well, you didn't say if I did this, I was going to pee myself, <laughs> and then try to sue me. I don't have any money, so don't try to sue me anyway. So let's get back onto this. Aaron Gray, you know, tell me about, you know, how did you get into acting in the first place? How did it hit you? Oh, oh, oh. well, actually, um, I was 15 years old looking for a summer job and um, I came home and told my mother and her boyfriend that I had gotten this job at the local department store and my mother's boyfriend went, why would you want to work for a department store when you could be a model and make a lot of money? And I went, uh, first of all, I didn't, don't know if I'm qualified to be a model and I wouldn't know where to begin. And the great thing about uh, Gene, his name was Gene Greenwood. Um, he was an inventor, and so he sort of thought outside the box. Very good. And he actually, bottom line is, is I started, ended up starring in two national commercials within three days, and it all wow. started with the Yellow Pages. Nice. So it's the Yellow Pages. It was and the Aaron Yellow. Gray. Yeah. It was very interesting because he said you always, when there, when you are doing something, you're venturing for something. You start with what you know, and then you do research. So what do you know about? modeling or acting and you have to work in Los Angeles and you have to work with photographers. So he opened up the Yellow Pages and he literally cold called every single photographer in Los Angeles and he said now there's another lesson you're going to learn. He said some people are going to hang up on you and get mad I don't have time and other people are going to give your time to you and then always say thank you. And um, so he, within three hours he called every single photographer in LA. He knew more about the business than most people do and during that process he found out, of course, that you needed to have an agent, so then he started to do a little survey, a little graph about, you know, why do you like working with this agency, why don't you, why do you not like working with it, what are the problems, full why status, is it full thing. Full statistician there. Yeah, so, um, and then the next, and then while he did that, he said, we work in Los Angeles, so he put a map of L.A. on the wall. And every time he called the photographer, he put a pin on the map. And then after a while, we realized that they liked to be in neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So the next day, I was 15. He taught me how to drive. I had my learner's permit. So I drove into L.A., scared to death, going like 20 miles an hour on the freeway. Oh, uh, the, the cool 404. Yeah, 405. Oh, the but, 405, that's right. right. But the cool thing about Gene was is that he showed up with a cherry red Mustang convertible. And in 1965, this was like the first... Mustang in, in California. It was like this hot car, and I was so nervous, but it was great. Um, Gene did things the right way. Um, 
And that anyway, the right way. and anyway, I ended up. Uh, he then the next thing we did was we cold called. We just knocked on doors all the way up Robertson Boulevard and across Santa Monica Boulevard. And he said again, people are going to get mad at us and not not want to be bothered with us, or they're going to be really nice. And so we got three or four people who were really friendly and nice. Oh, come on in, put a pretty girl. I've got some. I got a new camera lens. I want to try out. And before you know it, I was testing. And then about noon, he we were in the neighborhood of where we knew the agencies were located, and he said, which one would you like to go to? And I picked the bottom on the list, because that's basically where my self-esteem was at that time as a teenager. And got some board secretary who was really tired of people coming in, and she barely looked at me, and she just gave me this a lot of attitude, to mm -hmm. come back next week, and we have cold calls at that time. And, and so I was ready to go home. And one of the things that Jean kept saying to me all the time was, what have you got to lose by trying? You've already got the job at May Company, so what have you got to lose? Exactly. You know, they said no, go to the next person. Keep going, keep trying, keep trying. So we ended up, the first, the number one agency in LA was across the street, so we went over to her. And in that, in that period of time, Nina eventually uh, allowed me to come in and meet with her, or rather her secretary did. And they, she said to me, I don't work with anybody under 18. I don't like working with social workers, and I don't like dealing with their parents. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll send you on these two auditions, and if you do well, call me back when you graduate from high school. So I went on the two auditions the next day, and uh, at 5.30 in the afternoon, I was in my bedroom, and my mom's boyfriend, Jean, came in, and they said, Have you, did you call Miss Blanchard and thank her? And I was like, oh, do I have to? You know, this is a typical teenager. And I picked up the phone, and I went, Hi, Miss Blanchard, this is Erin Gray, and I just wanted, she said, where the blank and blank are you? And she literally, she swore. <laughs> I was like, uh, excuse me ma'am, I just wanted to say thank you for your time. She says, no, 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 whatever you do, don't get off the phone. You've got to be in the office in half an hour to sign contracts. Okay. Contract. She said, yes, nobody walks off, walks in off the street and gets two national television commercials their first time out. And that's how I started. Wow. That's the story of that, where Aaron Grace started. That's how I started, through the Yellow Pages. Through yes. the Yellow Pages, just, you know, and like you said, what do you have to lose? By uh, trying, by exactly, trying. nothing. Yeah. Right. We've had uh, Richard Hatch on the show. Uh -huh. I'm sure you've met many times. Oh, Richard and I go back to 1965, actually. We were both modeling for Nina Blanchard. Oh, ah, okay. So yeah. there you go. And, you know, it's, it's like he's always said, you have to be willing to face the darkness and see, try something new. Because if you're miserable doing what you're doing, you know, what do you have to lose by going out Why there not? and seeing what else you can accomplish exactly. and take your goals? Exactly. And you'll Perfect. end up like Aaron Gray, a legend in the acting field, <laughs> loved by everybody. I mean, if you go outside edge people will scream and shout the moment we open these doors up for her because she's just so <laughs> loud. <laughs> so you know you did all this you've done so much and, and I try not to focus on any one thing but let me ask you you know in all the things you've done have you found a character that has really spoken to you and said that this character I feel is the most best thing I've ever done or has that just opportunity not happened yet? Uh, I've done some roles that I really like. Um, I do enjoy the fact that I was Colonel Lola Daring and, and playing a strong female character. Mm -hmm. I just felt that they never really expanded on my character very much. Yeah. And it was very much more of a shell of a character. <laughs> Hi, Sean. How are you? Hello. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. This is a private bathroom right here. I gotta go yeah, pee pee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's two yeah, interviews talk. he's gone through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, where were we? Oh yeah. Um, so I, I and love my character in Buck Rogers, and I said I wish I had done a little bit more with her. Um, I enjoyed a character that I did called Born Beautiful, which was about a woman who was getting too old to be a fashion model and end up becoming a photojournalist. And the reason I liked that part was a. I starred in it, which was great because most women and most characters that I did are always supporting characters. So this mm -hmm. is the first movie I did where the entire movie went through my main, my character. But also the cool thought part was is that the character was based on my best friend. Oh really? So she was there on the set with me. Her mom called me up and said, "Oh, if anybody's going to play Betsy, I'm so glad it's going to be you." And it was just, so that was wasn't that cool? So that's very cool. I mean, you get to play your best friend. My best friend. Who best oh. to play her because you know her in real life? Pretty well. But then, then came the other side was is I would do a, the scene where I'm arguing with her husband before the divorce, and I'm going. Did I do that right? Did I get the subtext? Did I, you know, did, 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 did I, did I? Am I portraying you correctly? Right. Did I reflect your personality the way you want to be portrayed? Uh, reflected? Bye, Sean. Bye, <laughs> Bye Daddy. It's okay. Carry on. <laughs> um, but actually, uh, and I finished a movie recently, which was 
close to something that I want to do. Uh, just needed to be developed a little bit more. But there is a character that I read a script that I read and I went, oh, this is the character that I would really like to play. And I remember, I remember, the, I remember the Orion something. Anyway, this I just don't have the time to focus on getting it produced. Mm -hmm. But it, it's a cool character. It's about a woman who time travels. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. Always fun in the sci-fi community. But what's cool, and you don't find out about this until the very end. And it, the movie actually starts out with her sending out five invitations to people to let them to to invite them to her death. Sounds kind of familiar there, sci-fi fans. Yeah, um, and one of the invitations is to her son, and her son, like, Mom, what is this? What are you talking about? What do you mean you're going to die? I mean, is this one of your dramatic moments, and, you know, what, what are you trying to pull here, and whatever? Mm -hmm. And what it is, is she ha she ha she's, she's, a, she's going to help, sh sh help them reach their goals, because they're all stagnant in their lives. They've all made choices where they're not doing what their talents, um, where their talents lie. Like yes. one guy is a is a concert pianist, but he works in a piano store fixing pianos, and like he's got a family and kids, and he just he'll never go out, he'll never yeah. he'll never try, exactly. he'll never go for it. And never she is, and in and in her death and in that process of of bringing them together, she gets them to reach outside and, and go f and shoot for it. And, and just become, you know, become and the become true. Better, be, 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 and, and, and bring out their inner qualities yes. and, and, and whatever. So. And make them just as best and as And what's interesting is that, that she goes on to another time period and wow. does it again. So she just keeps traveling through time, through time helping and people. Through helping people. Very cool. And then she's also a Tai Chi master, which I teach Tai Chi, so I thought that was cool too. <laughs> Very cool. And uh, you know, uh, hopefully this project gets I, off the ground. I I mean, would, it sounds like it'd be a great series. Uh, either either would, a great series or a, a movie. Great se either a movie or a series. It could be just a movie. Right now, it's written as a movie, but I could see it as, as a series. I could definitely where see she this keeps being coming into different time periods, and 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 that's her focus is finding these five people to help them. Well, in, in the words of Abed from Community, three seasons in a movie. <laughs> That's what we're shooting for. Okay. Erin Gray, it has been a true privilege and pleasure having you on the show. Thank Finally, you. after these many months and many conventions we've seen you at, uh, you can always go to erinngray.com yes. to find more about her. And we can go to that sci-fi show.com and we'll have this interview as well as link up to her website. Erin, just once again, thank you so much for giving us some of your time. You're welcome. My pleasure.